Back in the garage today. Back in the back in the garage. Back in the garage today. Back in the garage. Back in the garage. Back in the garage today. What's going on, guys? Back in the garage today, making a video that I was hoping I wouldn't have to make. Um, I'm getting, I'm doing the uh, the big service interval on my KTM Super Adventure. It's got about 34,000 miles on it. I'm a little short of when it's due, but also did it a little bit earlier last time because I think I did everything before I left for uh, Alaska. Anyway. Got some downtime, wanted to go ahead and go over everything, change the coolant earlier, change the oil, I was gonna change spark plugs, and I checked the valve clearance. Unfortunately, a couple of the valves are tight on it. On the uh, rear cylinder, the two intake valves are out of spec. So you need to know how to disassemble your bike and get it down to this point. I've already done a video on how to take everything off of it. There's also a video on uh, how to check the valve clearance. So you can watch that video to get you to the step we're at right now which is gonna be disassembling the camshafts, taking them out, getting to the shims, figuring out what size I need, all that good stuff. This video is gonna be shot over a couple of days because I don't have a shim kit here, so I'm gonna figure out what sizes I need, get to the motorcycle shop later this week, and uh, re-shim this bad boy, so let's go. So you can see I've got the valve covers off both the front and the rear. We're only gonna be concentrating on the rear cylinder because this is the only one that has valves out of spec. It's the two intake valves right here that are out. So the process would be the same working on the front or the rear and whether you're doing intake or exhaust, either way we gotta take everything out of here, so let's get to it. Just a quick note before we get started, the engine should be, or at least whatever cylinder you're working on should be at top dead center. I've already got it set on the rear cylinder here. Now we're gonna start disassembling the camshafts. All right, so over here on the right hand side of the bike, the first thing we need to do is pull the timing chain tensioner, which is right here. I believe that is a 22 millimeter bolt on there. We're gonna get that spun out first. So if you're trying to figure out how to get on this, it's best to come in from up top here. You still don't have much movement, but I've been able to break it loose and I should be able to spin it out with my fingers from here. Just be careful when you're pulling it out of there, make sure that O-ring comes out with it. All right, we're gonna set that aside for a minute and go on to the next step. Next thing we wanna do is remove the spark plug input shaft. All I did was just take a screwdriver and it's already popped loose there. Just be careful because it is plastic and it just should just pull right out of there now. We're gonna set this aside. Okay, so next up we got a bunch of screws to remove down here. We need to get rid of all these black ones because we're going to end up removing the uh, camshaft uh, bearing bridge here in just a moment. So I just checked and all of these are, whether it's these bigger ones or these smaller ones, they are all 5 millimeter uh, hex or Allen, whatever you want to call them. I'm going to get all these pulled out. It does say to remove them outer to inner, so I'll start on the outsides and work my way in. Just a quick tip, I was able to break them all but one loose with, with this setup right here. Let me show you what I did on this back one. So on this bottom one here, KTM didn't leave you much space because you got the shock here and I couldn't get enough torque on this. So just take a regular Allen key and then take a wrench and just slide it over there and that'll give you enough torque to break that thing loose. All right, as you can see, I got the four outer bolts out and I'm gonna work my way in on these inner ones. So not the best camera angle. Next we gotta get the bridge out of here. Should just be able to wiggle it loose and pop it up. Oh, that cam's wanting to fly out. It's okay, just set it back in place there for a second. Again, gonna be a little difficult to see, but the next thing I wanna do is remove the timing chain from the rear sprocket here and go ahead and pull that camshaft out. Now, we're gonna pull both camshafts out, but I don't want the timing chain falling down into the motor, so I'm just gonna throw a screwdriver through there, make sure it doesn't go anywhere. And... Come on. All right, we got the camshafts out. Make sure you remember uh, which one goes in, in what place. Now because like I said, this is going to be a couple day process for me, I went ahead and placed some paper towels down over here. I've got everything oriented uh, the, the way it came out. This is your front camshaft, that's your rear camshaft. Now we need to uh, go pull the shims and see what we're dealing with. Okay, so not going to be the easiest thing for me to show on camera because I can't get my hands in there and film it all at the same time. Basically what we're going to do though is just lift it up on the cam lever and then grab the shims out of there. I'm not gonna mess with the ones on the rear because those are the exhaust valves. I know those are within spec, so I'm only gonna grab the ones out of the intake valves. 
Easiest way to do it is just grab a little magnet. That's what I did. You can see the uh, the shim, <laughs> if I can get it off of there. Uh, you can see the shim right there. Make sure you uh, place them in order so you don't forget which one's which. Just to be extra careful, I uh, went ahead and labeled them. Now in some cases, there'll be numbers written on these that tell you what the size of them are. As you can tell, there's nothing on this one. Let me show you the other one. This one on this side has a number on it, but it's wore out. Even if they do have numbers, I would still get out my uh, micrometers and measure them, and that's what I'm gonna do right now. So you can see this one is measuring at 2.63 millimeters. I'm gonna write that down. And the right side one is measuring at 2.73 millimeters. So here's my corrected math, or not corrected math, but on what I took out of there, this one actually we ended up measuring at basically 2.65, 2.75, and I'm basically just gonna drop 0.1 on each of them, which might make it a little loose, but on the intake side, it shouldn't be too bad. So uh, yeah, that's where we stand. Also, just got back from my buddy John Ross's house, who happened to have shims, so um, we can actually start putting this thing back together. It's a pretty straightforward process. I'm just going to lift up here on the on the arm and uh, put put the correct shim in on each side. So that's what it looks like with the shim in place. Still got to put the one over here on the left side. Now, because I don't really have a way to show this, uh, we're going to start out with the uh, intake camshaft. That's the one, at least on the rear cylinder, it goes up front here. We're gonna get this down in place and then we'll move on to the next step. And, and by putting it in, we're also gonna run the, uh, the chain around the gears there. Okay, you can see I've got the intake camshaft back in. I went ahead and, and lined up the mark on it so it's, it's a, at the right position. Make sure when you're working on the rear cylinder, you get this little plastic piece reoriented on the end of the, uh, the camshaft on the intake side. So you want the open part of it pointing up before you can put this thing back together. I'm going to try, it's going to be tough to see, but you should be able to see the timing marks there lined up flush with the top of the cylinder head. We've got the chain on, now we'll move on to the next step. So next up, we're going to put the cam bridge back in place, and it's going to be opposite this time. We're going to tighten the, uh, the middle bolts first and work our way out. Additionally, there is a two-step process for doing this, so I'm just going to flash it up here on the screen so I don't have to re-explain it. Now, unfortunately, I don't actually have a torque wrench that uh, can get to each and every one of those, so a couple of them just had to uh, be tight. All right, so the spark plug housing, if you look down in there, it's going to be pretty tough to see, but there's an O-ring. Just put a little bit of grease on that before you pop this thing back down in. All right, the spark plug housing is back in place. Don't be afraid if you have to coerce it a little bit with a rubber mallet that may be necessary. Just make sure it's lined up first before you tap on it. So one thing I failed to mention earlier is you need to pull your timing chain tensioner out. We took that uh, cover off right here, that, that uh, 22 millimeter one. Uh, but go ahead and pull this out because now we have to reset it before uh, we put it back into the engine. And when you take this out, make sure the O-ring does come out with it. It may stick down inside there. If it does, just stick your finger down in there and pull it out. So the KTM manual shows one way of doing this. John Ross showed, showed me another way. So we're going to put it in a vise. Set it. Yep, went in too far. So if you go in too far, when you let off of it, you're going to see it start expanding back out again. May take a couple of tries. Basically it comes down to, I need a bigger vise. There you go, now it's set. Obviously clean it up. You probably should replace the O-ring. I don't have a spare one and I wanna get this thing back together. Just want to give you guys a close up of what it looks like when it's set. Uh, you can get a good idea right there. It's going to go back down into the engine in this orientation, and then we're going to put the uh, cover bolt back on. So I'm doing things a little bit different than what the book calls for. We dropped it back, we dropped the uh, tensioner back down in, we put the cap back on, 
now we're going to come up here to the top and see if we can uh, if we can pop that tensioner and get it to pop into place. So essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a screwdriver, I'm going to be on the chain side and I'm going to go down to where the tensioner is coming through and I'm going to put pressure on it and see if I can't get it to pop and you'll know when it pops because then the, uh, the chain will have tension on it. Uh, we'll see how this goes. I'm not going to be able to record it because I uh, can't see anything anyway. So fast forward an entire 24 hours basically. I just called Lance over. I thought maybe I was doing something wrong trying to get this cam, cam chain tensioner to engage. Turns out my cam chain tensioner is wore out and it's engaging too far. So I'm going to go ahead and replace it. I'm going to put the order in tomorrow. Maybe I can go pick it up tomorrow if they have it in stock. I'm going to go ahead and replace the one on the front as well. And then I'll get this bike back together. All right, so fast forward just, uh, I don't know, a handful of days, maybe a week. I've got the new cam chain tensioners here. I also, you can't see them, but they're, they're stapled to the uh, receipt. I've got the new O-rings for the cam chain tensioners. Also brought in just a little bit of help tonight. Makes it a little bit easier with two people. So um, Lance and I are going to uh, get this thing uh, back together tonight. Get the cam chain tensioner set, uh, both on the rear and the front. And then I just have to buckle everything back up. So uh, let's get to work. All right, so we dropped the cam tensioner back into place. We've also taken the uh, end cap off of the bolt cover that's going to go over top of the cam chain tensioner using a five millimeter Allen. We're going to screw this big one back in using a 22 millimeter wrench, and then we're gonna to try to set the cam chain tensioner. Let's make sure it works here, but snap on. So Lance is using a snap on pick tool here. It's not the actual KTM tool, but it should work okay. There's a part number on it. And there you go, if you wanna know what the part number is. And uh, we're gonna use that. There's a little spring tab, sorta, on the back of the uh, cam chain tensioner. We're gonna put a little pressure on it, see so if we can't get it to uh, spring and get a little bit of pressure on the guide and the chain and we can check our timing and uh, hopefully everything's good to go. That's about as easy as it gets. All right, so forgive me because it's been a few days. I don't remember if I showed how to use just a small uh, Phillips screwdriver to hold this thing into place, make sure it didn't pop out of time. We're gonna pop that back out of there. We're gonna crank the motor over a couple times, make sure we're still in time make sure the valves are in spec before we start to button this thing back up. All right, so we made sure the timing marks are still lined up. Now we're gonna put this little end cap back in. It's gonna go in right here. Uh, you ought to be able to spend most of it in by hand and then just take a five millimeter Allen to tighten it up. Uh, also, wanna make sure that the uh, O-ring's still intact there. All right, so we're done with the rear cam chain tensioner. While we're at it, we're gonna go ahead and put a new one in on the front because it only makes sense since the bike's down right now. Same sort of deal right here. We're on the uh, left-hand side of the bike, 22 millimeter. We're gonna pop this out, pull the cam chain tensioner out, do the same thing we just did on the rear cylinder. We're not bothering to put it at top dead center. It shouldn't move on us, so we're just gonna do it wherever it's at right now. All right, we got the cam chain tensioner out. We got the new one right here with the new O-ring. We're gonna go ahead and pop it back into place, do the same thing we did on the rear cylinder. All right, so we've got the cover bolt back in using a 22 millimeter wrench. Once again, we've taken the little center cap out. Lance is gonna pop this uh, bad boy back into place right now. That should have, oh, no. Hopefully. Maybe. There it went. There it goes back into place. We're gonna turn the motor back over again, make sure it uh, doesn't jump time. Obviously, we're gonna put a 14 millimeter on it. And if it doesn't, then I can start to button this thing uh, all the way back up. So it did not jump time. The uh, cam tensioners are working just fine. Just make sure you put your little cap back on just like we did on the rear cylinder. And then I'm sorta of done. All right guys, so obviously I'm not done entirely because I still have to put the bike back together, but I've already made videos on how to do that. I'll link those down in the description or up in the upper right hand corner. But that is how you actually go about adjusting the valves on one of these KTM adventure bikes. Doesn't matter if it's 1090, 1190, 1290, they all work the same exact way. So hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider that subscribe button because if you like motorcycles, well, this is the place to be. If you have any questions about the installation process, what we did in this video, let me know down in the comment section below. I'll do my best to try to answer them. Obviously, huge thanks to Lance for just coming over to help me get those cam chain tensioners set. I'm gonna link his channel up in this corner and also down in the description below. And as always, I'll talk to you again soon.